Hello everyone! Welcome to your final week of Keyboard Harmony 2. Um, we'll be going over the materials for video 12 today, as well as a little bit of information about the final project, the uh, final performance, sorry, final performance, um, which is coming up. So I'll start quickly by going through announcements. Um, so we are almost done. In fact, all assignments need to be submitted by April 26th. I've opened it up to everyone who has any missing assignments um, to you're welcome to submit anything that you are missing, whether that's entire missing videos or missing parts of videos, as long as it's done by April 26th. Anything submitted after April 26th will not be accepted to be graded because we need to start grading on the 27th. So um, if you're going to do that, please submit them by April 26th. After that, we will not take any late submissions. Um, many of you received an email from me this morning, so make sure you read that. If you didn't get an email from me, it's because I didn't send you one. But if you did, please read that closely and um, email me if you have questions about anything. Um, another thing to email me is the piece that you're going to play for your final performance. Um, if you don't email you, if you don't email me, I won't like get angry or anything. But the benefit of emailing me what piece you want to do for the final performance is I will tell you if it's a high enough level. So if you pick something in Piano Marvel, you'll know if it's a high enough level because we'll be level five or higher. If you're playing something that's not in Piano Marvel, um, then you can take a gamble or you can email me for approval. And then this week we are doing a lot of modal scales. Um, so you can skip two scales if you would like without any penalty on your grade and all of the exercises need to be 75 or higher. And the final reminder is um, to complete your idea survey, which is due April 27th. This feedback will be really helpful as we design future courses at Keyboard Harmony. So um, we really appreciate the responses that we do receive and if we have a 70% or higher response rate, then you will all receive two points of extra credit. So don't rely on your classmates to do that, but make sure you take responsibility as well. Um, and then if any of you want, um, I'm doing my graduate recital on Sunday at five o'clock. You can attend in person at the performance hall or you can watch the live stream if you would like. Um, this will count towards your 80 recitals that you need to attend if you'd like to come. I think it will be okay. <laughs> Hopefully it will be good, um, but I don't wanna make any promises of like greatness. So anyway, those are all the announcements for this week. And let's jump in and do some exercises. So, Let's start here. So this week we are working on modes. Um, I don't know what you guys have covered in your theory classes. I'm not even entirely sure what theory classes you're in right now. Um, probably theory one since it's spring semester. Anyway, so in your theory classes, if you haven't already at some point, you will hopefully talk about modes. Um, if you don't, this is your introduction to modes. Um, I'm actually going to switch and I'm going to show you my iPad and I'm going to take a few notes for you to reference if you would like. So a mode is basically a collection of pitches that make up a scale. Um, so the pitches are whole and half steps. Um, you should all be familiar with two of these. Um, just go with classic black to write these. So two um, modes you should be familiar with, whether you know it or not, are Ionian, which is the major, sorry, that looks like a C, is the major mode, and 
aeolian, right? Which is the minor mode. So I'm gonna quickly write all of these down. I will probably sell, spell some of these wrong, so please don't judge me. Um, Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, there's a nice gap there, and Locrian. Okay, so like I said, um, Ionian and Aeolian, you should be familiar with already. Ionian sounds like this. Just a regular major scale. Aeolian, just a natural minor scale. Now these other scales are all, um, there are a couple ways to think through these. Um, the, the way I do it to start with is there is a method so um, for each key, <laughs> um, there's a natural mode that goes along with it. I'm sorry if I don't explain this well. I'll do my best, though. Um, so if we start from C, that it, we start with Ionian and play all white keys. That gives us an Ionian scale. If we move up to D and play all white keys, that gives us Dorian. Keep moving up to E, all white keys, Phrygian. And then Lydian. And then Mixolydian, Aeolian, and then Locrian. Oops, sorry. Um, so that's one way you can do it. Is um, this is C Ionian, D Dorian, E Phrygian, F Lydian, um, and they're just all white keys. Another way you can go through this is you can figure out the pattern. So for example, um, Ionian. You should all be familiar with the this pattern, but it's tonic whole whole half whole 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 half, right? To make a major scale, to make a Dorian scale, you play a major scale, but you lower the third scale degree and the sixth scale degree. Um, so if we're in A major, for example, instead of C sharp and F sharp, we'll have C natural and F natural. Wait a second, Dorian. Sorry, I, I did that wrong. It's the flat three and flat seven. It takes me a second to think through these. Um, so that, that was probably just a mess for everyone watching. I wanted to do this a little bit quick, but um, that's how you can figure out what scale you're playing um, by altering different scale degrees. Uh, we won't get way into this because I wrote them all down for you, but I will quickly go over them. Um, if you would like a way to remember the order of modes, um, there's a little uh, sentence. I don't, it's kind of negative, <laughs> particularly like modes a lot. So that's kind of a negative sentence to help you remember modes, but it works for me. I don't particularly like modes a lot. So if you're spending some time with modes, um, these are things you'll want to have memorized. Okay, let's go to playing through some stuff. So here we are, F Lydian scale. We're playing these as tetrachords, which means um, you'll play 5, 4, 3, 2 with your left hand, then 2, 3, 4, 5 with your right hand. So you don't have any crosses or anything like that as you're going through this. Um, to make a Lydian scale, you take a major scale and you raise the fourth degree half of a step. So normally in F major, we would have a B flat, right? But instead of a B flat, we raise that half a step. So scale degree four, half a step. I really like Lydian scales. I don't know why, they just sound really nice to me. So major scale, raise the fourth degree, half a step. I will play this for you. I'm not slowing these down today, but just as a reminder, you can go as slow as 75, but no slower. But I'm gonna keep these the same for today. Here we go with F Lydian. One, two, set. Okay, let's
let's move on. Uh, 306, uh, again, this is a C Lydian scale. So we take our C major scale, um, no sharps or flats, right? Raise scale degree four, half a step. This finger goes up half a step. And that gives you Lydian. It sounds like this. major sounding. Okay, keep going. We're going to G Lydian. So G normally has just an F sharp. We're going to raise scale degree four, half a step, and that gives us a C sharp and a G sharp, and it will sound like this. One, two, set, go. <laughs> Modes are fun, aren't they? Um, okay, now we're going to B flat, Lydian scale. B flat normally has a B flat and an E flat, but instead of E flat, we're raising that to an E natural. Here we go. One, two, set, go. Okay, so that was B flat Lydian. Moving on to E flat Lydian. Instead of A flat, we have an A natural. All of these accidentals are written in for you. The thing that's not written in is the note that's changed. It's just um, adding flats on the keys that are required to be flatted or to be sharped. Anyway, so instead of A flat, A natural for E flat Lydian. One, two, set. kind of cruising through these but that's how we do okay so on to the next part we are playing an F Lydian we're playing in F Lydian mode um, but we're playing diatonic chords so remember F Lydian F will be our tonic but there will be no sharps or flats um, in this so we're going to have major chord, major chord, minor, minor, major, minor, minor, major. And that's what we get as we play through this. Um, here we go. F Lydian diatonic chords. Right hand. One, two, set. take back what I said there's a very tiny mistake in here your four chord is not actually minor it is diminished so this is written as minor but a, it's really a diminished chord which means it should have a tiny circle like a little temperature sign circle right here to indicate that it is diminished um, okay same thing left hand here we go Diminished, major, minor, minor, major. One thing I'll remind you of when you're playing these chords is you do not have to hold these for the full value. I'd rather you feel comfortable moving. Um, keep your hand in the same shape, but don't lock it. If you feel any tension at all, I tend to feel tension. Um, at the front of my shoulder when I lock my my hand shape you want to lock it but you want to keep it loose so what I mean by locking is don't do this in between each chord and really you just have to hold these long long enough that we can hear what kind of chord it is so if it's a major chord or a minor chord that's all we need so you could two, three, four, two, three. really you could play quarter notes and it would be absolutely acceptable. Okay, let's move on. We're still on page 306, but this is part four. This is your first little piece. Um, 
this is very interesting. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on here. Um, our tonic is implied as C major, but we have an F sharp. So if you have C, if you take a C scale, but you put an F sharp in there, that gives you C Lydian. So this little piece is in C Lydian. This is kind of interesting. You don't get to play in modes very often. Left hand is playing root position triads. It just alternates between C major and D major, and then back and forth. And it keeps the same rhythmic pattern all the way through. Right hand, um, make sure you keep your fourth finger on F sharp so you're not surprised when it comes around. Other than that, it's staying in the same position. So let me show you what that looks like. So instead of just regular C major, I pop my fourth finger up here and I'm good to go. My right hand does not need to move this whole time. Make sure you're not having any weird curved under fingers. Um, just keep your fingers flat-ish and relaxed so that you can reach the sharp uh, without being like on the edge. You wanna feel firmly rooted in what you're playing. Okay, again, I'm not going to slow this down, but you can slow down to 75 if you would like. Here is page 306, part four. exactly think of what this reminds me of but it's something to do with like space or I don't know okay 308 we've moved on to mixolydian scale so a mixolydian scale um, the way you build it is you take a major scale and you lower the seventh a half step so G major normally has an F sharp which is the seventh note so instead of F sharp we'll play F natural and that gives you the mixolydian sound. So um, that's how we do mixolydian. I will play through these for you now, starting on G mixolydian. One, two, set, go. There it is. I think mixolydian is the most convincing of major because it's just at the end that it changes. Okay, moving on, C mixolydian scale. So C major normally does not have any accidentals, but we are going to lower our seventh note a half step. So we're gonna have a B flat in here. That will make this mixolydian. So here it is, C mixolydian. One, two, set. mixolydian so F major normally has just a B flat but we'll raise the seventh scale degree half a step which will change E into E flat and here it is one two set go lovely mixolydian sounds okay next is D mixolydian so D major Normally we have an F sharp and a C sharp. Change that seventh scale degree, so it's down half a step. So we're basically just getting rid of our leading tone, um, getting rid of that pull into tonic. Um, okay, here is D mixolydian. Next is A mixolydian, so seventh scale degree, normally G sharp has now become G natural, and we still have C sharp and F sharp. One, two, set, go. Let's see what we have next. Okay, so now we're doing mixolydian mode um, with diatonic 
triads. So we're starting with G mixolydian, which uh, remember has no accidentals in here. Here they've they've corrected this, so we have a major chord, minor chord, diminished, major, minor, minor, major, major. Okay. Uh, so same thing, do not hold these chords for four counts. Keep your hand relaxed, but in the same shape as you um, cycle through these chords. Here is G mixolydian, right hand, diatonic triads. One, two, set, go. <laughs> left hand, same exercise. just barely thought of. If you would like to play your diatonic triads hands together, go for it. If you're comfortable with that and you want to cut down on how much time you're recording, just play those together. Um, or keep that hand separate, either way, as long as you're getting both hands in somewhere. Um, okay, so this is interesting. What are we playing? Okay, so we have a B flat in our key signature, but our tonic is outlined as C. Um, so what that's telling us is we have C, starting on C, um, play through a scale, but just add a B flat in there. So that gives us C mixolydian because it's the seventh scale degree lowered half a step. Um, similar to before, you're alternating just between two chords, between a C major chord and a B flat major chord. Um, make sure when you're doing this, I'll show you in just a second, um, that you're changing your hand shape a little bit. I'll show you what that looks like. Um, really quickly, your right hand is much more active than before. Um, so watch for your flats. Um, this spot right here, that's kind of a stretch. So make sure you spend a little bit of time playing through that. Okay, let me show you a couple of things before I play the whole thing. Here's your C major chord. It's just kind of in a neutral shape, right? This is the natural shape of our hand. For B flat, you want to keep that same shape, but notice the change of where my hand physically has to be. So here versus here. If you're trying to play this chord and you're ending up twisting like this to reach it, that's taking your thumb away from where it can reach. It's literally causing my shoulder to hurt, um, but my shoulder already hurts because I was playing pickleball yesterday. Anyway, um, so make sure you move your hand into a position where you can reach B flat without contorting. It should be the same shape, just a different position on the keys. Um, now, measure three and four, I would say, are a little bit difficult. So I would practice these in isolation. Because you see that change? Stretch here, and then cross, and then you're in a new position. So as soon as I cross over, watch my thumb. See how it pops out? Leave it there because starting in measure five, this is our new hand position. Okay, I'm gonna play through this. Um, ooh, I'm pushing buttons, I don't mean to. I'm not, again, I'm not changing the tempo, um, but you can slow down to 75 if you would like. Oh, sorry, I don't wanna share my screen. I just want to play this. Okay, here it is. One, two, set. Uh, 
uh, something I'll point out that I did here. Again, I didn't hold those their full value. If you want to hear those all the way through, add a pedal in there. So I'm connecting that sound with my pedal, but not my hand. Um, either way, just make sure you're moving comfortably and you're not like missing things just because you're trying to play things easily or awkwardly. Sorry, you're trying to play things awkwardly. Don't, don't play things awkwardly. Okay, moving on to Aeolian. Aeolian is your natural minor scale. Um, so in order to make a natural minor scale, you can either just know how to do it, which is what I do. I just know how it goes. Um, or if you are more familiar with major scales, make a major scale first and then lower three, six, and seven, which is kind of a lot of work. But if that's what you know, that's what you know. So let me show you. If we're doing A Aeolian and you know what A major is, you make, make A major and then lower three, six, and seven. And that gives you A natural minor, also known as Aeolian. So here is A Aeolian scale. One, two, set. to C Aeolian scale, C major, no sharps or flats, so lower three, six, and seven. That gives you C Aeolian slash natural minor. Here it is. One, two, set, go. Okay, moving on, D Aeolian. I'm just going to play through these. Here it is. One, two, set, go. And then E Aeolian. One, two, set, go. Okay, so we're on to a new scale. Um, Dorian, the way you make it is, oh, did I, oh, I showed the wrong thing. Um, the way you make a Dorian scale is you take your major scale and you lower three and six. So if we're doing D Dorian, D major has an F sharp and a C sharp. So to make it Dorian, we lower that three and that six. This gives us all white keys in D Dorian. Here is what it sounds like. I really like Dorian, just as a side note. Here we go. One, two, set. because it's confusing like you think you're listening to major and then it's or you think you're listening to minor then it's majorish and it's just all over the place okay next is a dorian so take a major lower three and six and that will give you a c natural and a g natural but you keep your f sharp sounds like this one two set This only has a B flat. One, two, set, go. The more I think about 
about it, the more I think I said this wrong. I think I might have said that you lower the third and the sixth scale degree. I'm pretty sure I said that, but you should lower the third and the seventh. So if I said that wrong, I apologize. I think I did. Um, here's C. Dorian with a lower third and seventh. Dorian mode, diatonic triads. I'm going to go ahead and play these with both hands, but I'll walk you through the chords really quickly. You start minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major, minor. So anyway, that's what we're going for. I'm going to play these with both hands, like I said. One, two, set. your Dorian diatonic triads. We're still going. Okay, so we are on to Phrygian scale. Um, okay, so Phrygian, if you built it off of E, has no sharps or flats at all. This one's starting to get even further away from what we're familiar with because we're changing more and more things. Um, there are a couple of ways to think about this. You can take your major scale and change, lower the second, third, sixth, and seventh. That's a lot of things to lower to make for June. That's one way to think of it. Or you could take your natural minor scale and lower your second, and that's all that you require. So. If you're thinking about major, lower second, third, sixth, and seventh, half a step. If you're thinking natural minor, lower your second, half a step. I know modes can get crazy and confusing, so really, if you wanna talk about these, if you want more information or more practice, email me. But for now, I'm just gonna play through these. Here is E Phrygian. One, two, set. triads so we're sticking um, I'm gonna do hands together um, but for these all white keys again so just keep that same shape your chords are minor major major minor diminished major minor minor so just getting more and more interesting here it is Phrygian diatonic triads one two set Um, and now we're going to play a piece in E Phrygian. So, um, same thing as before. I take a look at my key signature, I look at my tonic. My tonic is pretty clearly E, because we're starting and ending on an E open fifth. There's also, we're returning back to it, but there are no sharps or flats in the key signature, so that tells me um, that we are in Phrygian because um, it has that flat two of minor. So if we were in E minor, we would have an F sharp, right? That F sharp is gone. So anyway, left hand, similar to before, it's staying pretty close together. Oh, that's nice. That's like very medieval castle sounding. Um, your right hand is playing a lot of thirds. Um, follow the fingerings they give you, but let me show you a couple things to watch out for. Um, I'm going to show you my hand, but in measure one, make sure you 
repeat that G. That's a little awkward to play. If you want to get really technical about how you would play this, if you were playing something like this for like a performance or, you know, more than just playing it to pass a class, um, you, because these are slurred, we want one of the notes to slur. So um, we can't slur G because that's just impossible, but we can slur from B to E. So that's what I'm doing. You see that? I hold B, release G, and resound it. Anyway, that's getting way technical, but if you wanted to know how you would do that, that's how you would do it. Um, moving to measure three. This is a little hard. I would spend a few times playing through that um, and feeling how it feels to move up a finger and then back down each time. And then again, similar to before, same figure with new fingers. Um, th these are kind of hard, so I would take the time um, to play through these thirds. Uh, you don't want to be too flat. It's hard to control those with flat fingers. Easier with slightly curved fingers. Okay, here is what this page 314b adagio sounds like in E Phrygian. One, set. for pedal. Um, it's hard to connect everything nicely, but with the pedal. I'm still connecting with my fingers, but I'm allowing the pedal to help me with that. Um, okay, that's everything. Your final keyboard harmony video. Well, besides your final performance. Um, thanks for sticking it out with me. I know modes are a little heavy. So really, if you want more information, um, either clarification or you just want to know more about modes, send me an email. I'd love to talk about it. I don't get to teach modes very often. Obviously, that was kind of a mess, but um, I'm happy to talk about it anytime for anyone who is interested. Good luck this week. Again, email us if you need help, but do it sooner so that we can all finish the semester relaxed and happy. And I will see you guys um, when I watch your final performances. <laughs>